Good afternoon, and congratulations to you, the class of 2021. It's with distinct pride that I address you here on this auspicious occasion. Today, we mark the completion of your law school education and the beginning of your continuing education in the law as active and committed participants. Typically, I would give these remarks in person at the Academy of Music in front of you and all of the people who supported your path to this remarkable achievement. And in, in the midst of all that we've achieved together in the past year, that is worth celebrating. I acknowledge my own sadness, like yours, at not being able yet to fully be together on this occasion. Nothing has been typical about the past year, and yet I've seen in you and in our overall law school community a few constants even amidst this pandemic. First, you didn't get here alone, and we are also so appreciative of all of the family, friends, teachers, mentors, and colleagues who have supported you every step of the way. Second, in your time here, you have collectively displayed the collaboration, collegiality, and care for others that makes this school such a special place. This last year has been marked by masks, quarantines, distancing, weekly tests, daily symptom checks, and a whole lot of hand sanitizer. You've taken these precautions uh, to heart and allowed us to open our building this year and then operate continuously throughout the year as a safe and secure learning environment, even if an unusual one. We couldn't have gotten to this point without your flexibility and responsibility on and off campus, and my colleagues and I are really grateful for that. And of course, what has always been true, no matter the public health circumstances, is that whether you were here for three years or just one, you have realized and embodied the best vision of this law school's education. You've completed a rigorous interdisciplinary course of study in which over three quarters of you as JD graduates are also leaving Penn with a degree or certificate from another part of this great university. You've demonstrated a commitment to lawyering in the public interest that I urge you to maintain throughout your careers, wherever they may take you, performing tens of thousands of hours of pro bono service locally, nationally, and globally. And you've applied your talents and values to leading our campus community in over 80 student groups whose activities range from important and robust political debates and discussions of inclusion and exclusion to more lighthearted yet also important social and athletic activities. To so many of you who were student leaders in these groups over the past couple of years, thank you for keeping your presence and role and your groups active even remotely during the past year. Your voice and activities were essential all the more in a year when we couldn't be physically together. My colleagues and I had a good sense of your outstanding credentials and experience and backgrounds before you ever entered this law school. And you've continued only to impress us more and all, all, and all of those who've known you since then. Joining me in congratulating you and celebrating you today virtually are my colleagues on the Penn Law faculty and staff, distinguished alumni, and other friends of the law school. Collectively, we celebrate your achievements, celebrate your opinions and values, celebrate your potential amid the uncertainties our profession faces and the unknowable twists and turns that your own careers will take in the years and decades ahead. We send you out into a world that is changing rapidly, where many challenges and opportunities await and where historical inequities persist and cry out for better and fairer resolution. We've seen the truth of this all too clearly in the past year. And we've done our best to provide you with many of the tools, the knowledge, the analytical skills to meet those challenges and solve the deep problems in our legal, political, social, and economic systems that my generation, like so many before us, has not done enough to adequately solve. There is plenty of work remaining for you to do, and we know that you will do it. But while we've given you top flight training for these future endeavors, we didn't give you that most important attribute for you going forward, your inherent sense of justice and motivation to tackle problems that face our country and our world. It's important to acknowledge and celebrate another attribute that you have that we here at the law school can't take primary credit for, and it is this sense of justice and a principled distinction of right and wrong that you brought here and nurtured here, but you came to us with that. This internal compass you had far before you came to law school, I've seen it firsthand while you've been here, and it's inspired me and my colleagues to rethink our own assumptions and operations and evolve to do better and do more ourselves. And you will carry it through your careers um, wherever they take you. Nurture this sense of justice, protect it, and let it be your guide as you encounter tough decisions in the years ahead. And at the same time that you nurture your core values, always be ready to challenge them, revise them in response to new experiences you have, new information, and expose yourself to smart and ethical people whose sense of justice might be slightly different than your own. 
As you combine this sense of justice with the formidable legal skills you've learned here, you can take strong principled positions. That's what the best lawyers do across a wide range of practice settings. And as I acknowledge your own principles that you carry with you, I also want to thank here the many people in virtual attendance today who've helped you develop your sense of justice and who are even more proud of you than we are, even more responsible for your success and your achievement. And that's your parents, your families, your partners and spouses, your children in some cases, friends, and whether you're long distance from them today or whether you're sitting with them watching this ceremony, please join me in showing them appreciation for all that they've done in your lives. And I join in that appreciation. Thank you. We know based on long experience and even more from recent data, like last year's class of 2020, where as of today, 257 of the 258 JD graduates are in uh, long-term full-time jobs, that as Penn Law graduates, you are as well poised as any law graduates in the country to enter your career and to launch with an excellent job in the coming months. Yet even as you prepare for that first job, I encourage you to remember that a job is different than a career. And for many of you, this job will only be the first step in a winding path in the law or outside of it, a career that might go down multiple different directions you never would have expected. Every year, I have the privilege of talking with hundreds of alumni. And at our reunion events, whether in person or virtual, I talk to alumni who've been out of law school for five years or 25 years or 55 years and everything in between. And I always hear the same two-part refrain from these law school graduates who span the decades. Number one, I never would have imagined in law school that I'd be doing this today. And number two, I couldn't be doing this today or gotten here without the lessons I learned at this law school. So you're all poised to achieve this kind of success and new opportunities will present themselves over the course of your career. Opportunities that might not even exist today. Be open to these opportunities and resist the temptation to chart out your careers too far in advance. If this past year has taught us anything, it's taught us how fragile and fraught our human plans and expectations for the future can be. But it's also taught us and taught me, who is so privileged to be your dean, how remarkably resilient, adaptable, intelligent, and committed you are, even as the world changes dramatically around you. That doesn't change. And you're going to be moving on after today into this world of tremendous change, both for yourselves and for our profession, and indeed for the world around us. But one thing is always going to remain constant. You are all part of this law school community for your lifetimes, and that doesn't end once you receive your degree. This will always be your law school. As the faculty, staff, and alumni watching this virtual ceremony can attest, you will always have a home here. To all of you, I extend my deepest congratulations to all of you in the class of 2021. Thank you and good luck. Congratulations. This past year has been very different from what you envisioned when you applied to our LLM program back in the fall of 2019. And this has been a year of firsts for the program. First fully remote preterm summer program and Wharton Business and Law Certificate. First opportunity to obtain an LLM entirely remotely. First LLM spring start. Although in-person engagement has been limited, we've had exciting new opportunities which were only possible in the world of Zoom. For example, some of our most prominent alumni were able to teach remotely from places like London and Beijing. During a recruiting session, a current student from Nigeria was able to meet with interested students from Kenya, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Ghana, and South Africa all at the same time. At another event, alumni and current students from Korea, Indonesia, Australia, and Vietnam were all available to answer questions from admitted students. Our SJDs and visiting scholars met more regularly and with higher participation than ever before. Throughout this year, your stamina and patience have been remarkable. You have had to endure tremendous amounts of uncertainty, take classes at times that did not necessarily line up well with your time zone, and constantly manage technical challenges and internet instability. For some, this was a lonely year while others manage demanding academic challenges while simultaneously caring for children, parents, siblings, and partners. Some of you even experience significant illness yourselves. Despite this, you are highly engaged and successful both in your classes and in many co-curricular activities. Many of you also regularly participate in social opportunities online, bridging time and space to get to know one another. 
As a group, you are exceptionally patient, gracious, and understanding. And the graduate program's team is eternally grateful for your positive attitude and flexibility. Honestly, I'm disappointed that I did not get to meet each of you in person. However, that chilly day in January when many of us came together in the courtyard of the law school is one of the strongest memories that I will carry forward from this past year. I'm optimistic about the future, especially for you, as you are now alumni of Penn Carey Law. You will have many opportunities, both professional and personal, to engage with one another and the amazing Penn alumni community around the world in the coming years. I hope to see you all in Philadelphia, and once conditions allow, I plan to resume hosting a luncheon for LLM alumni at my home on reunion weekend. Moreover, once international travel resumes, I look forward to meeting with you in your home countries. You have made it through this exceptionally challenging year with flying colors and now are ready to take on anything. I cannot wait to hear about all your future successes. Janan Abushtaya. Mishal Alkalaika Nora Alkatani Faris Azamel Mary Bagdasarian Rada Bat Chen Chi Chen Anna Dai Laura Edwards Hugh Fitzgibbon Wuning Fang Sung Ji Ha Hi, congratulations to all of you on graduating from Penn Law. I know it has been a challenge and in more ways than one. A big disappointment to me is that I have not been able to get to know you better in person. While Zoom has been wonderful in some respects, it hardly makes up for everything. Anyway, I hope that sometime in the future we can connect and that you will return to the law school frequently. In the meantime, I wish you the best of success and good health. Heartfelt congratulations on your graduation. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you from many time zones around the world. And today we're so happy to celebrate your great achievements. Yi Hao Ho. Ling Ling Hu. Sakurako Kajio. How lay Leo Lee Shu Kai Liu Shu Yu Lu Shin Ran Lu Arthur Lau Levi Morales
Barney McKay. Dear friends and fellow classmates, my name is Peter Zhang, and I'm incredibly honored to be here representing Penn Law's LLM class of 2021. If you were to ask me, what was the most exciting thing that you did last year? My answer, without a doubt, would be accepting the offer from Penn Law and flying all the way from Shanghai to Philadelphia in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Was it easy? No, not at all. That was a time during the initial chaos of borders closing and countries laying down visa restrictions. I had to transit through four cities in three different countries and quarantine for 14 days before coming in. I was once told that we lawyers need to be smart about how we spend our time. So I carefully, with much consideration and research, chose my quarantine spot, Cancun, Mexico. Although I was lucky enough to take the risk of starting a new life in a new place at a challenging time. Many others were unable to take the same step. Until this moment, we still have many classmates who are still abroad and choose to tap into the Penn Law experience from afar. But hey, here we are at our own graduation ceremony. We all made it. A round of applause for all of us. Law school experience is never easy. It is especially true when we lawyers practicing in other jurisdictions come to this prestigious US law school and study in a different language. This year, we were also presented with some other special challenges. For example, many of us were warmly welcomed by the spotted lanternflies on the streets, and we finally decided to fight back after that hospitality became overwhelming. Some of us arrived in Philly with a backpack and two suitcases, only to find that most apartments for rent were unfurnished. So we ordered a bed online and slept in the bathtub while putting our trust in the US logistics system. Studying from a different time zone can also be problematic. Some of us fell asleep during class and woke up to find that class already over. And meanwhile, the professor was genuinely trying to figure out why the student who stayed for questions after class on Zoom was not moving. These stories could go on and on, but after all, for every challenge we have faced, we have created ways to overcome. Apart from our amazing academic achievements, we also managed to make our time at Penn Law fun and unforgettable. Whether through online birthday parties, mindfulness sessions, campus scavenger hunts, group trips, or just hanging out at the law school courtyard. Due to COVID, all in-person gatherings have been downsized. But because of that, we were actually able to have more in-depth conversations and build more meaningful friendships. We are from very different cultures and backgrounds, but we are now able to call each other good friends. Friends that keep you company after a long day and friends that welcome you to their home when you just pop up unannounced. All of our achievements and experiences were made possible by those around us. On behalf of our LLM friends, I would like to express a tremendous gratitude to our outstanding faculty for being passionate, caring, and supportive throughout the process. We're also sincerely thankful for Elise and other exceptional Penn Law staff who welcomed us, helped us, and made our experience at Penn Law better than expected. Most importantly, I want to express our deepest gratitude to our family members. Thank you for keeping an open mind when we decided to start a new life during this challenging time. Thank you for showing us your love and support every step of the way. We would never be here without all of you. Dear LLM friends, one year ago, we were scattered around the world, feeling anxious yet excited about our new journey at Penn Law. Now, we're all here, graduating with joy and pride, feeling excited again for the possibilities in the new chapter of our lives. We will go on to different places take on different roles, and create different memories. One year from now, if I ask you, what was the most exciting thing that you did last year? What will your answer be? Good luck and congratulations, guys. Kengo Miyauchi. Catalina Ramirez Palau. Alhassandra Hossi Martens. 
Andre Sia. Su An Song. Jun Wen Wong. Lin Chan Wong. Song Sing Wong. Zhao Chan Wong Tashiyuki Watanabe Danny Young Hello everybody. Big congratulations on being almost graduated and on finishing up what is probably the most disrupted year in the history of the Penn Law School. It was a great pleasure teaching you over the summer program, and I hope that you come back and visit us in Philadelphia very often in the future. Thanks a lot, and congratulations again. From near and far, every one of you has made an extraordinary contribution to Penn Law, and we are so, so pleased that you chose to spend the year with us. Congratulations on your graduation. We look forward to remaining in touch as your extraordinary careers continue to develop. Gu Chao Yang. Ziguo Yang. Shi Fei Yu. Zhu Xiao Yu Chen Zhen Ray Zhang Peter Saidong Zhang Yu J. Zhang Jun Chen Ju Asaf Raz Yi Fan Lin It's a remarkable achievement. We wish you all the best for your future career. Congratulations, Diana. It's been a tough year and we're all very proud of you. Uh, we're so happy to hear that you're graduating. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, we and our big family will always stand with you and love you. Hello, University of Pennsylvania Law School Class of 2021. I am delighted to be able to offer my warmest congratulations to you. As graduates, you've worked really hard to get to this point in your professional journey, and I hope that you'll be able to do something fun in celebration of this great achievement. Your graduation from law school is a milestone, and it is also a huge accomplishment especially during this extremely challenging year. I'm sure that when you accepted the offer of admission to come to the University of Pennsylvania to study law, this is probably not at all how you imagined your eventual graduation day would be. We have all been upended by the COVID-19 pandemic, but I am acutely aware of the difficult circumstances that you have faced as a student in particular during this extraordinary time. One of my daughters was a freshman in college this year and she took all of her classes online from home, which could not be more different than the typical college experience. She was certainly grateful to be able 
to continue her studies during a time in which there was literally nothing else to do, but she was also deeply disappointed that her entry into college was so dramatically different than what she had hoped for and expected. So I know that your last year as a graduate student was not at all what you thought it would be, and that's really hard. But as I've said to my daughter, I hope that you will one day be able to recognize and appreciate one aspect of this experience, and it is this. This past year has provided you with a relatively unique opportunity to demonstrate your own capacity for resilience at an early point in your professional journey. And that is an important realization, both in legal practice and in life. Think about it for a second. However you handled coursework and classes and exams and interactions with students and professors prior to 2019, once the law school pivoted as a result of COVID-19 and you had to adapt quickly to dramatically changed and unexpected uh, circumstances, you fundamentally altered the way in which you studied and processed and learned. And not only did you make that change, but we're here today because you ultimately thrived. Sure, your predecessors had their own challenges. You know, they had to walk to school during snowmageddon, uphill both ways, but you were able to complete your legal studies and earn a professional degree in the midst of a once in a lifetime pandemic. So in addition to being able to play the ultimate storytelling trump card. Tell me, what can possibly stop you now? The bar exam? A less than robust job market? Unreasonable filing deadlines set by an overworked and cranky judge? Believe me, if you can shift your mindset and transform the way in which you absorb nuanced legal information basically on a dime, you can do anything. So more than anything, I hope that the fact that you've now faced extraordinary and unexpected challenges and triumphed has given you the confidence to do hard things. And of course, your well-earned confidence in your own abilities also necessarily carries with it certain responsibilities. Adaptability is your new superpower, but what will you do with it? That is, how will you direct your time and talents moving forward? Let me start to provide a potential answer because one of the things that we've all observed over this past year is that the United States of America has many resources, but it also has many needs, including the need for skilled lawyers who can defend the rule of law and promote access to justice. As you head out into the professional world, I sincerely hope that you will keep both of these responsibilities in mind. On the rule of law front, you've now all been trained regarding core constitutional values. And if you intend to practice law, you will be required to take an oath affirming those principles. That is a solemn pledge. And once you've taken it, it will be your obligation to ensure that your practice conforms to the highest standards of ethics of our profession, including honesty, character, and fidelity to the principles that animate our Constitution and our justice system, no matter what arguments you're making or whom you represent. Practicing lawyers are also obligated to ensure that every member of society has access to justice. As recent graduates and new practicing lawyers, there will come a time when you're asked to take on clients who may not be able to pay for your services, and you might even be called upon to represent indigent individuals who are unpopular or who have been accused of committing crimes. When that opportunity arises, please take it. The rule of law to which we are all committed cannot flourish unless the legal system is fair and open to all. And that means everyone is entitled to have effective representation. Pro bono legal service is both a good skill building opportunity and a high calling because our justice system can only function properly if talented lawyers like you step up 
and do the work of representing people who do not have financial means with just as much zeal as the work that is done for paying clients. This duty always reminds me of the front facade of the Supreme Court. You may have seen it in person or in pictures. And of all the things that could have been engraved above the front door of our highest legal authority, what is there standing alone are four words, equal justice under law. That is a stark reminder that equality is a critical component of our justice system and that lawyers are the primary protectors of that core constitutional value. In short, I urge you to remember that ensuring access to justice for all through pro bono service is both a privilege and a duty. And I know that you will always act in accordance with the highest ethical standards as is necessary to support and defend the rule of law. There will be plenty of time to put these principles into action as you chart your professional course, and I'm sure that your resilient skills will serve you well in the months to come. In the meantime, I hope you will take pride in what you've already accomplished. And to that end, let me thank your friends and family for all of the support that made this day possible. And once again, express my sincerest congratulations to you for a job well done. The future is yours. Good luck and be well. First, let me say a huge thank you to the woman who has been a shining light at Penn for so many years, President Amy Gutman. You continue to make all of us proud. To the Dean of the Law School, Ted Ruger, and to your class president, Anita O, oh, who was so kind to send me a personal note asking if I would speak this year. Thank you to both of you, it is an honor. After leaving my day job at ABC hosting The View about a year ago, this is really the first invitation that I couldn't resist because all of you graduating today are going to play a huge role in shaping and in many ways healing what I still believe is the greatest country on earth. No pressure guys, you don't have to start solving all of our biggest challenges until tomorrow. But seriously, this is your moment. It is now time for you to fly. I'm gonna do my best to be as open and honest as I can with you because while I've been lucky enough to live what I only dreamed about on my graduation day, I've also failed a bunch of times. I've lost elections and been fired. And in front of millions of people, I even asked Lupita Nyong'o how long it took to do her hair and makeup for Star Wars. She was an animated character, by the way, not my best moment. As you all go to start the next phase of your life, a new job, maybe a new city, you will inevitably be thrown into things that you've never done before. I remember so well, thinking back, anchoring my first show on MSNBC, I was, just 27, so anxious, so unsure of myself. I tried my hardest to fake it and sound older and far more polished than I really was. I spent way too much time watching other anchors around me, listening to how they spoke, how they asked questions, how they read the teleprompter. I couldn't get out of my own way. Well, not too much time passed in this new job before my executive producer and now one of my life mentors, he pulled me into his office and he said, what are you doing? You're trying to be anything but yourself. I hired you because of you. He then said, don't be afraid to be vulnerable on and off camera because it's real and no one can take realness away from you. Instead of focusing on what you're not good at, he said, focus on what you are good at and then become great at that. I've carried that advice with me ever since. We all have something unique to offer. Figure out what that is for you. Well, that experience also taught me about having a good mentor I'm sure many of you have a mentor in your life or someone that you look up to, but if you don't, then you should find one. Be actively on the lookout for that special relationship, not just someone who has a career that inspires you, but someone who is also the kind of person that you hope to be. And try to be someone else's mentor. Be that person that you want others to look up to because the world will only be better for it. So in my world of TV, we can say whatever we want. We don't really have rules, it's now, complete entertainment, and journalists and TV personalities are taking full advantage of it, saying what they need to say to build their own brands, to get a headline, or to trend on Twitter for the next 24 hours. It's quickly become all too self-absorbed and obsessed with ratings and money and fame in place of facts and truth or giving the audience what they deserve to hear. 
Well, the trouble is, it's impossible to have any real debate if no one can even agree on the same facts. And that is filtered right into our politics. Instead of spending time trying to agree on reasonable, good policy that impacts all of us, they spend way too much time furthering their own personal agendas on national television or on their social media platforms. Think about it, how often today are journalists and news personalities and politicians the headline of the story that you're reading? Shouldn't they be the ones telling the stories or helping us understand what's going on around us? It is now a me, me, me world. And then we wonder, why do we feel so far apart from each other? Honestly, this is one of the big reasons that I had to step away from TV. I felt like I was only adding to this problem and to the divide. I wasn't helping to solve it. Just look at Twitter. Think about Twitter for a moment, a platform created to help give everyone an equal voice. How many have now been silenced because they've been bullied or threatened for whatever their views are? What's the difference anyway between fact and opinion anymore? It's hard to know. My fear is this, that entertainment media, our new version really of news, politicians and social media only adding more fuel to that fire, will continue to weaken and destroy one of the main things that this country was founded on freedom of speech, which is why your career within the law, whatever you choose to do, will matter more than you probably even realize and is so needed. As lawyers, you have to play within the rules. You don't have a choice. You live in facts and in truth. You also have to be able to make your opponent's argument with clarity, even if you don't always personally agree. Some of you may go on to represent some of the most vile, hated people in the world because your jobs will be about arguments based in principle and rule of law. It's one of the things that I love about lawyers. You are actually trained to listen to each other. This is what we need more of. It's not about you or your ego or building your own platform. It's about the rule of law. Well, some of you will become practicing attorneys or maybe you'll go into public service or a totally different path from your expert legal education, maybe even television. Many of you will become part of the great debates of our time, and I thank you for that. But I do ask this of you, dedicate at least some part of your life, no matter how small, to keeping our democracy healthy and thriving. What makes America unique is its ability to remake itself and to heal its wounds. Your charge as you wake up tomorrow starting your new life chapter is to help heal our wounds and to create a more perfect union. Because talk shows, we can't do that. You can. That is what makes your life and your work so important. I won't end with my own words of wisdom because you all deserve far better than that. But I will leave you with the wise words from my own dad, my number one mentor in life, who has selflessly served almost every president over the last 30 years. He loves this country and he loves Penn probably more than anyone I know. He spoke at Penn's graduation years ago. This was his simple advice then. And it is still my advice to you today. Find yourself, find a cause, face failure, find someone to love. I'll add this one, find a mentor. And finally, I'll add this one too. Use facts, principle, and selflessness as your compass. Congratulations, graduates, go make us all proud. And in the words of our own Benjamin Franklin, don't let the bastards get you down. Or was that someone else?